Um, so, so in this next section, we are going to do a very brief, brief demo of MidJourney. So this is a pretty complicated tool. This is uh, something that requires you to know a couple of different tools in the process. And so um, I want to confirm you guys can see my screen okay, and we'll get started giving you a brief overview. Of Looks great. This tool. Looks great. Thanks, Dan. Um, okay, so before we dive in, I guarantee you will be confused about what I'm doing if you are not already have a baseline familiarity of some of this software. Discord is an important system for you to know. This is Discord is nothing special. If you have a niece or nephew or child who plays video games, go ask them what Discord is and how to use it and they can tell you. Discord is actually a chat and video communication tool that's actually very popular in the video game community and has recently become very popular with things like cryptocurrencies or software development, et cetera. You can kind of think about it like Slack. Discord is a free tool you can use. And the way MidJourney works is it actually is a separate platform that creates a robot that you can chat with and interact with in Discord. So what you're about to see is I'm going to share my screen and I have my Discord environment set up where I have a server on Discord. I will share a link later for how you can set that up. And I will be talking to like I would talk to a human a robot called the Midjourney robot, and that's what you're about to see. And that is how you use Midjourney right now. So I'm sure there will be questions. I will do my best to answer them at a high level. And in the short term, I just want to show you how this tool works in action. So um, the first thing I'll do is because this tool, like Olivier mentioned, can take a little while to render images, I'm going to just go ahead and get it started very quickly while we go look at some examples I already had worked through. Um, that way we can check back in at the end of this demo to see if it works. So right now I'm in a chat interface with MidJourney right now in a tool called Discord. And the way that I prompt the AI to do something is I type in this imagine command. So I'm doing slash imagine, and it allows me to put in a prompt. You can put in a very simple prompt like we saw before, like red car, but you can also create really complex prompts. And I sent a link in the chat to an online prompt library where you can see some of the things that that people are doing. In this case, what I'll do is I'm just going to tell it to produce a dog flying through the air with a cape. Let's do it, the air with a cape with dramatic lighting. And I'm telling it to do an aspect ratio of 16 to 19, which is basically just going to make the image a certain size, 16 by nine, sorry. So we'll go ahead and get that kicked off. What happens when you chat with this robot is it says, okay, I've heard you. And then it will slowly start to produce an image that can take anywhere between 30 seconds and maybe a minute and a half. So while we're waiting for that robot to, to wake up, let's go take a look at some other stuff I've already done. You can see it's actually gonna slowly start producing this image here. We'll come back to this. So in this example, this is what you'll see when you start working with a tool like MidJourney. So in this example, I made up a use case. I said, what if I wanted to redo the illustration on our marketing website? So in this first site, First prompt, I just asked the tool to give me an illustration for a search engine marketing website. And without any other information, it actually does a fairly good job providing some really nice hand illustrated things. Some of the things you can do with this tool is similar to how Nicole was showing us for language models like ChatGPT, you can get more specific. So in this next prompt, I said, okay, well, let me be a little more specific. Let me give, give me a search engine marketing illustration for a tech company by Slack and Dropbox in the style of Behance, which is a, a company where I really like their design style. And I told it to produce it with an aspect ratio of 16 to nine, and it gives me back these samples. What you're seeing is that you always get four images back from this particular tool. That's something called batching, which we won't cover in this, in this lecture, but if you wanna go deep down that rabbit hole, you can send me a message. Um, so in this example, now they've changed the style and I like this actually a little better. What MidJourney also gives you the option to do is once you have a set of images like this, you can ask for specific variations. Um, you can also prompt MidJourney with an image. So in this case of this illustration, I actually liked an illustration we already had on our website that looked like this. So I said, let me just, let me just go ahead and send in an image as a prompt with my original uh, written prompt. So in this case, I gave it the image and said, give me a search engine marketing illustration for the website. And it now produced images that are done much more in the artistic style of the image that I sent in as one of my prompts. So you can actually prompt these tools with both language and images. And you'll see if you're ever out Googling or using a tool like Stable Diffusion, or some of the tools we'll talk about in our lesson about videos, it's very common to do image to image prompting 
in these image tools and not just use text. So in this example, I liked this style better. And I said, hey, I'm, I like this picture in the top right. And I asked MidJourney to actually create different variations of just that one image. So it gave me a sample and I said, produce a bunch of similar versions. And now I've got here, what looks fairly chaotic, a bunch of different examples using that same design with small permutations. And some of these examples, I've got a person, you know, touching a touch screen. Some examples, I have a person, I guess, reaching into a box or digging a random hole. So by itself, again, like Olivia, Olivier was saying, these aren't perfect, but they're really good inspiration for the, for the first part of this design process. Once you do a variation like this, you can then have the, the machine upscale it. So like Olivier was saying, you can have it produce larger images with higher resolution and get to an end state where I now have an image I can give to my designer or go over to Photoshop with and start working off of as an existing um, asset that we use in our website production. So I did see a few questions about how we were prompting. So we do use that imagine command and that was what was used for all of these examples. The way that this works is once, once I put that in, it, the response just removes that from the response. So you actually, I actually did type imagine. It's just not showing once it gives us the response back since there was some questions. Um, you can use stock images as prompts. Like if someone asked about Getty, but you have to make sure that you own the copyright. So you can't just use a free image from Getty images. But if you have an account and you've purchased the, the rights to that image, you can use that as a prompt. So going back to the original example, we put in that dog flying through the air with a cape and dramatic lighting and actually got some pretty cool stuff. So that took, I don't know if you noticed while I was talking, but that took about 50 seconds for that to produce that image. And so the, right now this tool is, is very useful for that creative stage, but it's not by itself going to be something I'll probably use in the wild without taking it through a, a design process with Photoshop or edits. There, there is one thing I do want to touch on before closing out this demo, because I think someone mentioned, I think it was Ken in an earlier slide with those examples of the older man that it really generated, all of these systems generated pictures of white men. And there, there's a big challenge that we have as humans with the structural bias and historic bias that's in all of this training data that feeds into these tools and it starts to reinforce itself. And it can be pretty dangerous. And so we as people, need to be very focused on making sure that when we train these machines, when we build these machines, that we are making sure we're training them with that diverse group of, of imagery from different cultural backgrounds. This is true of image models and language models. And it's not just because we have an ethical reason to do this, which there's some really amazing content out there we'll share on the ethics of some of these things, but also the tools work a lot better when we have a really diverse group of training data and we produce these. And I want to give you an example of this. My wife- um, just, is... just, uh, Sorry, just one quick point before you go to that. Could you go back to the dog image? Sure. You know, what, what John is, uh, what Jeff is saying is, is kind of not controversial. Like if you look at that, and I don't, I'm not great on my dog breeds, but you wrote dog, you didn't write which breed, and it came out with three or four different breeds and, or maybe even mutts. Um, and that is uh, biased against poodles, you know, and Rottweilers and my favorite dogs. And so what we're trying to say is that whatever dogs are most popular, whatever dogs have the most photographs on the training set are gonna be the dogs that are gonna be generated when you create the le learning model. And, and one of the pernicious things about these learning models is it's very expensive and time consuming to train them. And so once they're trained, you then need to, uh, on the initial data set, that's locked in, and then you need to train them about the outputs. And that's where, honestly, I think a lot of the bias work is going to happen is in what comes after the learning model is built, and now it's outputting stuff. And we need to teach it, hey, when we say dog, you know, don't always show us uh, golden retrievers and lassie-like dogs. That's That's not the reflecting the full diversity of what dog means. Maybe even they get smarter and they say, what kind of dog do you want? And so they ask us a question back so they can, ref so they can refine the prompt and give us something a little more like what we need. Sorry, you were going to share about your wife. Yeah, absolutely. So my wife is, is a data scientist for Disney. So occupationally, what she does all day is programs and creates algorithms for Disney Plus, Hulu, ESPN. She is a quintessential data scientist. If I put into mid journey right now, her image and the prompt data scientist, 
I got out this image, which what's going on here is, is mid journey has studied images of data scientists and believe they should be men with mustaches. And so even if I put in my, my beautiful wife's image as the prompt for a data scientist, who is a quintessential data scientist, you start to see this stuff in the wild. And and I would argue that that the responsibility for us, even though the reinforcement learning is extremely important, the training is also very important too, because part of what's happening, I just went to Google and searched for male model because I'm thinking of Zoolander right now. And if you look at the results, this is a machine that was trained like Midjourney is going to go and scrape the internet for pictures of male models. And you can see right here, this is not a very diverse representation. We have some white men, some black men. I don't see any people from AAPI heritage or anything diverse here. And there's, this is, this is part of the problem. And so there are a lot of really good initiatives going on right now, both with the companies that are, that are producing these tools to help with the reinforcement learning, but also with research institutions to try to create broader, better data sets that we can use as a human race to create tools that are less biased in practice. And right now they are biased. So as you're using them, please be careful and please consider the ethics of what you're producing.